Hello and welcome to the Mystic Cast, where you join me, Jack Stafford, a student of metaphysics, as I talk to a variety of guests to better understand the teachings given by the masters through the Aetherius Society, the new cosmic religion for the Aquarian Age, incorporating all yogas, Christian mysticism, theosophy, UFOs, and much, much more. Please note that this is an independent program, not produced or fact-checked by the Aetherius Society. Today, my guest is Casey Clark. Did I say that right? Is it Casey Claw? Um, d- yes. Claire is how my father pronounced it, but Claire is the more correct pronunciation. Because I remember from my, my time in the Netherlands, it was always Claire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that was, fine. Is it a Dutch name originally? It is. Okay. So, well, I've just, one of my last guests was Preston Dennett, who was a UFO. Have you know Preston? Yes, I met. He put me in one of his books. Really? Yeah, one of my uh, ET healings. Oh wow! Well, we have yeah, to get into that. But he was he was so fascinating, and then we got into because I I asked him about UFOs, and then I I didn't realize he'd done um, out of body OBEs as well. And um, I just bought his book; it's just arrived. I haven't read it yet. Nice. And he out of body exploring a beginner's approach, and then. He recommended this one, Journeys Out of the Body Body by Robert Monroe. So, mm-hmm. And so I really, thought I'd speak to you and get some more insights. A really interesting connection there, just because you mentioned Preston, is the way we actually connected was through a relative of his, Christine Dennett, who uh, is an ET artist. And it's actually Christine, my connecting with Christine, that turned on my skill with the crystal. Wow. When I saw what she was doing uh, with her ET artwork, um, I mean, my heart exploded. It was like, I felt like if I could just do something like that to add a visual to the out-of-body experiences and contact experiences I've had, I could begin to make it more real, but I have absolutely zero artistic talent. (laughs) And when I say zero, I mean absolutely zero. Um, And when we connected, a very interesting out-of-body experience ensued in which that night as I laid myself down, I consciously shifted out into galactic space and all night long, all night long, five, six, seven hours, I was actually at a job. (laughs) <laughs> and working when this happened, but um, ET after ET after ET came forward and presented in front of me along the backdrop of the star system it was from. They would just come up and then begin to rotate so I could get a really good look. And when this night completed, I had the skill with the crystal. And I could just, I began to just see moving pictures, you know, in them and, you know, doing this with my eyes, <laughs> making sure I was actually seeing what I was seeing. I had my phone sitting right next to the crystal the very first time it happened. And so I just, I checked my eyes with the camera and I took a picture and there they were. <laughs> I was just ever since have, have, you know, been, been working with that skill, but it was actually my connection with Christine that activated the capacity within me. And actually the initial capacity is a capacity that I seem to have for deep level connection and integration of others' skills just into my own neural networking. I've always been able to do this. <laughs> well, I Casey, know. I mean, we just jumped right in there off the bat. And, you know, my head's spinning already and up. We've got to do this for an hour, so let's let's slow down because uh, okay. you, you you exist in this space, but for the rest of us, it's uh, it's a lot to take in. I mean, uh, no, no. so 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 um, what do you see in the crystals? You you can you can see history, or they use them as a crystal ball, or you see is it type of uh, you uh, the history of the crystal, or what, what? All of the above, really. Wow. Um. So I can. There's a record in the rocks, and yes, I can read the record. So sort of like 
an Akashic record that's in the record of the rock that I can just visually see. So one of the very first things that began happening with me, um, and I didn't realize it was anything out of the norm because I had spent so much of my life alone, not really speaking to anyone, um, but I have light that appears in my visual field that according to others does not appear in theirs. <laughs> so, so I quote, see things. Yeah. Um, and the first thing that I realized I could see was the space itself. So I have this sort of reverse vision where I see things last. For the first thing I see is space and I can see the particles that compose space. I can isolate any of those particles. Is it like the matrix? Like when uh, Neo sees it? Well, just imagine, imagine a light just appearing there in front of you, a tiny pinpoint of light. But as you give it your attention to it, it um, seems to come closer and opens out into more detail. And uh, the more you give your attention, the more detail, the more dimension uh, that opens up to you. And it's a way of consciously shifting out of body, really. What happens is the space between me and that particle goes away until there's a contact, a connection, a union with me and that particle. And I'm taken into mm, who that particle is, where that particle is living, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All kinds of things, just sort of depending on what it's function is. And so the visual mm, phenomena uh, for me always existed way before the awakening in my 44th year. So that was always there. That was always in place. I just didn't cognize that it was anything. I didn't cognize that this stuff didn't happen with other people. Yeah, it's really interesting how my cognition well, things finally came online and we could probably even say that the awakening that occurred when I was 44 was an activation of my capacity to cognize and hold these things in my awareness for longer than a moment. Uh, and maybe even most especially cognize that it was different than what was happening with most others, you know, that it wasn't normal. Wow. And so, so with the crystals, you can see, is it a type of psychometry? Do you see what's happened, who people have handled the crystal before their, their memories? Could... I can do that. Yes. Um, what I see, what fascinates me, what captures my attention when this is happening is what I simply call a kaleidoscope. My vision turns into a sort of kaleidoscopic effect and a level of light mm, an amplification of light, a certain feeling of the light comes on at that point. Yeah. And it, it will just, there's no holding me away from that. I will just, I'm a moth to a flame with it. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, so maybe, maybe, go ahead, please go ahead. And, and this kaleidoscopic effect, let me say, um, just like the room here, the same thing can happen just to the space that I'm in. I, I don't require the crystal. It's really what it is we're really doing with the crystal is transferring the contents of my own awareness through the mean of the crystal. We're amplifying that through the crystal and snapshotting it with a camera <laughs> yeah. for others to see. So really, it's just a transferring of my own consciousness through the crystal, which is an amplification tool for others to see. Okay. And so oh. that was, that was how we came up with showing people the visuals, having no artistic skill for painting and things like this. Um, I do seem to have a networking, um, of lifetimes, uh, that work with crystals. And so other people can see into the crystals as well, once you've opened it or. Uh, let's see. How do you communicate it with other people? Then? Well, they see the pictures. I show them the snapshot. So I, I'm able to snapshot what I'm seeing for other people to see. So they look at the pictures. Oh, you take a photo. I take a photo. Ah, so it's a mm -hmm. visual thing into the crystal. 
Yeah, so I can actually take a picture. And what I like to take the pictures of, because nobody else can see anything else. <laughs> took me years. I'm like, you can't see that? It's like right there. <laughs> um, but nobody else seemed to be able to see. It. Let me say only one or two others were able to see at that level. So what I like to snapshot or what I call ET portraits, big old face shots. <laughs> I just go in and go in and go in to the kaleidoscopic effect I'm experiencing until I begin to see eyes. <laughs> and then I know that they're there, you know, but I'm seeing so much more um, that's going on than just the being that, you know, I just snap photos. And, and so that works with an ordinary camera? Just my ordinary cell phone camera. Yeah. Uh, so you, it's even you old. imagine you, yeah, you, 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 I'm just trying to get a grip of it. So you, 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 you look into the crystal and you can search for anything in your mind and it could be projected into the crystal. And then once it's in the crystal, it's big enough. You take a photo with your camera. Something like that. Yeah. Um, it's more of a feeling it's, uh, visceral, uh, it's through the whole field, meaning um, I'm aware of it. Uh, it has an energetic experience that comes on me, just like when I'm going out of body. Um, so mostly it's a feeling it's visual for me because I am highly visual <laughs> and I'm able to see so many, uh, that my, my, my visual field is much further than the human visible spectrum. So my vision is telescopic and microscopic. I can zoom in, I can zoom out, you know, just anywhere I want to go. Um, I forgot what the question was. Wow. It's just, I mean, what a tool. So you, you can take photos of through, through, through time as well from also from things that happened and things that might happen or. All through time. Yes. In fact, one of the very first things that came through the, the crystal, um, was a frame that was depicting my birth into the earth life. And in this frame, um, is my newborn self and up in the corner is a man I know in OBE circles and no further up in the corner, looking down at me, um, in the background is my earth mom and dad. And in the foreground is a ET conical headed male. And an earth human looking female, this is an Atlantean. <laughs> so a lot of concepts will come through. I was told about the Anunnaki and the, um, uh, Anki Enlil story. That was the next, and, and that was a huge download through the crystal. Yeah. It took me a year, a year to research, you know, all of that, uh, and the concepts that were coming through. Um, I've been taken into ancient Egypt and shown trons <laughs> that existed. Um, uh, and you know, the dem uh, utter destruction, you know, was depicted in, in that one. Um, so yes, so, so much comes through. Yeah. Anything comes through. I don't really go in for it. There's always an ongoing dialogue beneath the physical scene. So like, I'm always in here talking to somebody, you know, as I'm going about doing other things. Mm -hmm. Um, this is another level of this whole thing is I'm able to be in more than one field simultaneously at the same time. Um, even right here, right now, I'm aware of myself back there talking with somebody about what it is we're saying, uh, they're meeting, there's, you know, congregating and talking about what will happen here <laughs> and, and things like that. When I go on body, uh, same, uh, my consciousness goes out and I'm in multiple fields and multiple bodies doing multiple things at the same time. Wow. So. Uh, all of that fits together <laughs> wow. with the whole thing somehow, some way. Wow. Maybe we should give this a little bit of context for somebody that's just started and dropped in and, and doesn't know about your awakening or in your 44th year. I mean, yeah. could you just give a little summary of that? A little summary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, let me come out and say, uh, it was an abduction. So the thing that caught my attention, uh, actually was an abduction combined with, uh, uh, Kundalini. 
Okay. So mm -hmm, decades prior, I had these weird physical phenomena that were manifesting. One of them was starting to get very hot feet going into the night. Um, just ridiculously hot, having to get up multiple times with ice and having to sleep with ice in the bed with me on my feet <laughs> and things like this. So this went on for a long time and it continues still, but not to that level. And I know how to process the energy now to get it to not pool in my feet, but that was happening. And a few other things, I won't go into it, but it all led into one week where I had two missing time anomalies and they weren't your standard missing time anomalies. They didn't occur here in physical space. They occurred when I laid myself down to go to bed. When I go to sleep, I have an extremely large dream time. And I have always been able to dream, uh, bring all of that data back with me in the morning. I could tell you what I was dreaming at the top of the night, where I was and what I was doing in the middle of the night, as well as what was happening right as I was waking up. You know? there was, so there was um, a time flow, you could say. So when you dream in this way, when you're conscious in your dreams, uh, there's a, a span between where you know you've laid yourself down and where you wake up. But this week, there was nothing. Two days, in, two days in a row, I laid myself down, I closed my eyes, and literally what seemed five minutes later, opened them and it was morning. This happened twice in a row. Mm -hmm. And then the very next night it happened. So that this is how they're getting my attention. This is how they're waking up my cognition and my ability to hold in my awareness that all of this is happening. My lifetime, it was happening. I just, it didn't occur to me again as anything out of the, it's like you're breathing. Of course you're breathing, but are you always paying attention to the fact? No, it's nothing new. It's nothing out of the norm. So it was like this for me. None of this seemed out of the norm. So I just didn't hold it. <laughs> and they were trying to get me to hold it. And so the next night as I was going into the night, an interesting thing happened. I was awake in there, inside my body, inside my physical system, and an experience that seemed like I was being electrocuted, just lightly electrocuted. And it was enough to cause a start in me to throw me back into physical space and open my eyes. And I'm like, where I was still feeling it. But I just fell right back. I just sort of said, hmm. Right back off to sleep. And I've always been this way. Oh, always. Nothing strikes me as out of the norm. <laughs> I just hmm, and fell back asleep. And that happened a few nights in a row during the remainder of that week to the point where on the fourth night when it happened, I said, yeah, something, something, something weird's going on here. You know, and I start to finally see that this is something. And I start talking to, uh, uh, about it with some friends, you know, I'm teaching yoga. I'm in yoga circles at this time and I'm, you know, me meditated most of my life. Um, so I'm asking people, has anything like this ever happened to you in meditation or <laughs> when you go to bed and nobody's saying, you know, it has, and I'm like, that's so weird. But in the process of me, mm, acknowledging it and beginning to ground the experience by speaking about it in physical space, I'm bringing it more in to the point where the next night at the bottom of this week, I come fully alert in this sensation of being mildly electrocuted. Actually, it wasn't mildly at that point. It was like being strapped to the underside of the 747. <laughs> um, this is a Kundalini experience then. And yes, uh, the, the, the could, the, but we're just getting into the abduction. The, the very first thing that really set my central nervous system on fire. Um, so in the middle of this energy, I'm, I'm, I feel a force field, you know, at my back and it's just sort of pulling me, you know, up like a tractor beam that's pulling me out of my body and up into the corner of their own there at the ceiling. And I'm just looking down at myself. I'm recognizing what's happening. It's been happening my whole life. I'm getting abducted. 
<laughs> and it's the ones that I don't like to go out to, you know, and so I'm screaming to myself down there for help, which is what I've always done. <laughs> and, um, but I'm fully conscious, you know, but in the, in the middle of it, um, my heart rate is just going so crazy that I faint literally <laughs> right there in the middle of the out of body experience. And then just a moment later, it, this energy comes again and it's just like, I'm awake again. And this time I'm on board craft. I'm laying on that damn steel table, <laughs> naked and cold. Um, and there's this light and the light is at the crown of my head. And the light just scans me from the crown of my head down to my feet. And I'm just laying on the table, just eyes shut tight, screaming at myself, no matter what you do, don't open your eyes. This is not the kind of experience anybody wants to open their eyes in. Um, and yeah, that, that was it. A few other things happened while I was up there. Uh, then I'm back down in my body. <laughs> I'm on the floor. I'm curled up on my side. Yeah. And so that was the very first one uh, that got my attention. And what, what do you mean the first? Forward. It wasn't the first time you were adopted. It was the first time what, what had happened that was different. That was the first time I brought the information with me and held the information while I was back in physical space. That you knew you'd been adopted for the first time. So most people, when they dream, which is an out of body in which you're not aware you're out of body. <laughs> um, when they wake back up into physical space, they don't remember. They're just gone. Mm. Okay. So although this has been happening to me since childhood, these particular beings <laughs> um, coming for me, uh, I just forget when I wake up. I just let myself forget. Uh, but starting this night, there's no more forgetting. And this is what I mean by awakening. When you awaken, there's no more going back and forth. It's not like a spiritual retreat and then you go back to real life. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, now it's all the time. There's, there's no more forgetting. And that's why it's an awakening. There's no more going back and forth. Now you're just awake and you're aware. And that awakeness and that awareness is going nowhere. It's set, it's foot, it's permanent now. So, so you did remember your dreams before, but not, not in all the way. Yeah. No, I always remembered my dreams. It's this particular part group of, of ETs that come for me <laughs> that I didn't let myself remember. And where, just, where are they from? Yeah. I still don't know because I still have not let myself look. Are they still they, coming they, for you? They terrify me. Yes. They terrify me. Yeah. And it's still happening today. Uh huh. Yeah. And you've, you can't make it stop. No, no, that's me. That's me up there. <laughs> it's like, it, it's an astral abduction, not a physical abduction. It's both. I call them, I prefer to call them etheric body examinations or etheric, etheric uh, abductions because, um, it's just where the astral and the physical meet, there's a bleed over in that area. I call the etheric and that's the space in, in, in which it happens. Uh, yeah. And a lot of times these, these craft are in our local space. Because Preston, I was speaking to Preston, he's spoken to, to many people about these things. So he's an expert interviewer. Excuse me if I, I'm sorry, I'm a bit clumsy because you're the first person I've ever spoke to who's had these experiences. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Ha, um, so I don't really have any ready, ready questions. So anything That's you okay. think, yeah we really don't have to you asked what was the you know how the onset this was just the onset of me being able to hold my awareness while in physical space here forward um so the, this particular experience with these particular beings uh and it 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 terrifies me but very little else does <laughs> You know, I've, I don't know why I have not ever been able to look at these ones. I would love to be regressed and find out because I don't seem to be able to let my own self be aware of more in association with them. But there's contact with so many other things. I mean, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, um, you know, and, and it's always interesting 
coming face to face physically. Uh, and I don't necessarily mean 3D physically because that messes with the central nervous system. And that was the point we were, I was trying to work toward getting at at the onset of the awakening when these things happen. Um, it's a jolt to the central nervous system and, you know, my central nervous system, it wouldn't let me stop shaking, you know, for almost a year, you know, wow. um, while my body processed the information and as that's happening and as the Kundalini is working again, every night at the top of the night, the K comes through and, um, it does, it go, does it go up through Shishumna or is it, is it going randomly? Do you have con control over it rising? So I was aware of my process from the very onset of the process. So it's like somebody who goes into a surgical procedure and says, no anesthesia, please. And they're aware of what they were doing and what they had to do before they got there. They're aware of, you know, getting into the operation room and all of the setup and every single little thing that happens all the way through. This is how I did mine. And that was so that I could help more people so that I could see all parts of the process. So I could help bring us all together and, you know, not fighting one another saying, oh, that wasn't, you know, or that wasn't, <laughs> it all is, it's all a part of the process. It's just, we let our awareness come in on the process where we do, you know, and that's the part that we're working on the most usually. And uh, if it is part of your plan, part of your program to assist a lot of others, then you're going to let yourself be aware of what a lot of others still can't. Um, because again, your body has to, your physical body has to be prepared for this because it is also going to undergo um, a, a transformation in which it's fully aware from the very beginning of the onset of this all the, all the way through. Um, so with me, uh, the energy would come, it would feel like that light at the top of my head, it would move down through the soles of my feet and then bilaterally this energy would start clearing my whole physical construct. And it just felt like every bone in my body was being broken and reset, um, constantly for a year. Um, it started at the feet, uh, at the toes, you know, and just imagine a feeling that felt like every single one of your toes was being broken and reset while you were still fully conscious. Um, it, it was like this and it just moved from the feet up to the, um, hip creases. And then at the same time as this, um, the energy was working from the crown of my head down toward my hip crease. So it was just like my heads and feet in toward my center. Uh, that's how it worked with me. Now, if I were to, and, and this is just the clearing of the energy. This is just the clearing of the physical construct period. And, and this process took a couple of years. Is it, is, is it supposed to happen like that? I mean, I don't speak it as a, because, of, well, I've had a Dr. King who founded the Ethereum Society. He, he spoke about, uh, rise of rise of Kundalini. He did like eight hours a day of yogic practices, mantra and pranayama for, for 10 years in the 1950s after work so you yeah. do it through the night you know and so he developed these these powers of concentration he could concentrate on a, on a leaf or a fish scale or a candle flame for for eight hours without any other thought coming into his mind so mm -hmm. you know he's a yogi became a yogic master so and he explained that the, the pain of of should of, of rising up shushumna when it goes through the base of the spine is the worst pain you can ever experience known to man and then once it rises up through Shishumna, it opens up each chakra one by one. And then you get these cities, these, the, the, the powers, these mm -hmm. psychic abilities. Um, have you, cause it sounds like you're having such a rough time of it. I mean, it sounds like, shouldn't it be, it sounds terrible. I'm really, no, are, you, are you developing these cities though? Or do you have, have you had, once the chakras have opened, have you experienced greater abilities? It's, well, sure. Um, and, uh, uh, by location, levitation, teleportation, all of this oh, is okay. you know, explained right inside the out of body experience. So, um, there's two fundamental ways 
uh, in which the Kundalini is going to activate and process. And one of those is base to crown, which is the way I'm going to say 95% of those who are awakening um, in this manner, because I'm sure there's other ways. <laughs> Um, yeah, this doesn't, you know, because you're not selling this to me, Case. <laughs> this <is> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, do a base to crown. And that would be the way that I would say your master is talking about. Right. Base to crown. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very few people do it the other way around, which is the way I did it, which was crown to base. Oh, my God. So day one, boom, I'm out of physical space. I'm cosmic. I'm out of body, you know, as we like to say. And um, that's the main part of, of what's happening with me, the part that's happening now. So if you do base to crown to start, you're either going to cognize base to crown, but the system has to complete. Now you yeah. have to do oh that. Oh, my God. Oh. No. So, I mean, crown to base. Now you're going to have to go through the base to crown. So it, it has to complete. And anybody who does the base to crown is going to have to complete and do the crown to base part of the process. You have to bring it back down. Yeah. You know, once you've brought it out, you've got to gotta put it, it back. It has to be whole. It has to be complete. It has to finish yeah. the circuit. Yes. And uh, so uh, most people, when they start to be aware of this, they're aware of uh, uh, physical anomalies and, and phenomena that seem to be happening in the physical body and in physical space. Um, but they'll reach a point where they're in cosmic space and they have to pass through universal and galactic space to get back into physical space so that the whole process is complete. And I will tell you, it is galactic space that's hard, not physical space, <laughs> not universal space, not cosmic space, you know, but galactic space, because that's where the ETs are. And that's where you're going to have to um, connect with that level of idea with your physical construct. And again, your central nervous system is going to experience a shock of some kind. Um, not everybody, it, it, because I did mine crown to base, I'm fully, a crown is awareness. So I'm fully aware of what's happening in the physical body is the K is doing its work in the night, whereas most people are just off in sleep land. <laughs> mm. Okay, so they don't experience what I did. And that's why, you know, I'm saying much fewer people. Yeah, I've never heard of this. I mean, the yeah. spontaneous rise of like this, but because with some, maybe people it goes up. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a student of metaphysics. I study this stuff, but I have no experience. So excuse me if I'm just um, making many mistakes, but I heard that some people sent it up the front and that it's called the pleasure centers. And that's what we've done throughout many of most of our lives is that we've we've done it that way does that resonate so well here's the really unique thing again about um having the crown centers open before the base and that is you're aware of a much fuller spectrum of everything all at once um and what i can see with the awareness center wide open what i can see is that every person uh, holds their awareness in a particular pattern. Okay. And that, well, that pattern is like a kaleidoscope set on a certain geometric structure. And that geometric structure, when seen through, allows your attention, your personal attention to focus in on some things more than some others. Right. Okay. okay. And now put a whole bunch of constructs in here, focusing, you know, where the person wants to focus their attention, you know, in their own particular way. And you'll get the experience that a person's going to have of Kundalini. Okay. And so there are, so, uh, you, you just okay. can't say that it happens in any one particular way, unless your awareness center hasn't opened to the point where you can see that it's the patterns that the pattern of awareness that people hold that um, uh, construct, if you will, the experience they're going to have of Kundalini and all of anything. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And so you can see there's, all, there's just endless ways wow. in which this experience will get experienced and cognized and 
uh, focused in on, you know, and, you know, people's belief structures, again, will play a large part of this. This is why most people will do the base to crown because they have to work through those belief structures. Um, I didn't have a lot of any. I don't know if I had any. <laughs> did you experience, did you, did you levitate? Did you become invisible? Did you experience the city? All, of, the, all of that. So when I go out of the body, it is a process of first uh, levitation, then dematerialization, which I call the experience of which I simply call stasis. Of the, of the physical body, you had levitation as well. Then. Um, no, I couldn't say that it's of the physical body. Uh, when. When I lived up out of um, physical space, when my awareness begins to shift, uh, if I am in etheric space, it's you know how some people go out of body and they they just they're in their room and they'll look at the bed and see their physical body. Never saw one. <laughs> really, <laughs> never saw one. And did you uh, see something so, in the mirror when you look in the mirror when you're projecting? You see it? No, and I neither, I'm neither, not neither of them. No, uh, -uh. and sure. I've even had experiences where I go to look at my hands and that's when I realize I'm a point of awareness. <laughs> so yeah, I don't hold on to the physical like most, most people do. And so uh, I would love to have those experiences and every now and again, I ask to have them just so I can see what it's like for other people when they're experiencing this, but because I'm in multiple fields simultaneously, it's very hard. I don't like to, I don't prefer to narrow my attention down into physical space. Not even right here, right now, am I wholly in physical space. I'm holding most of my awareness behind myself. Um, looking at myself. Yeah. Okay. I heard, yeah, we do this does time with yogic teachings that you, we, Dr. King said, or oh, I think that we exist on all planes simultaneously, but we don't, not aware of it, but obviously. You are, yeah. So, wow. It's when it's when the um, the crown center and awareness center um, are are open. What, what I learned through all of this, in part of the process, was that mine are always open. And I will tell you what: if mine were, everyone's were. Mm -hmm. And it's a construct. It's a pattern that's put in the way that makes us not realize that. Um, yeah. And as are you, are you also able to act as a medium from people from the other realms? In another visual sense. So one of my practices as a Yanni is to talk. So um, I leaned more toward Yana, also toward yoga, uh, but more toward Yana. Uh, my disciplines were self-inquiry, Atma Vichara, and to uh, so through your practices before any through that developed you. Mm -hmm. okay. and Shavasana. Those were, those were the four practices that I adored. I had adoration <laughs> mm -hmm. for these practices. They, they were food for me. Um, so. So Brahmacharya is, uh, is, uh, no sex. Correct. Correct. Many of my lifetimes I discovered through the OBEs were, um, of warrior monks. Uh, yeah. V very male. And to get a warrior monk. <laughs> celibate, yeah. In this lifetime. Yeah. Shivas Sh 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 Shivasana, I've got that one. That's my favorite too. <laughs> well, if you can do it, this is the standard OBE position, you know, assume the position, but okay. very little did I, I wasn't aware that this is what I was doing. Um, I just knew the, that my, I'm more prone to horizontal, even in this field than I am to vertical and I've okay. discovered why. <laughs> so completely um, relaxed in Shavasana. And, it's and just hold, hold the attention at the brow, be aware of the fact that you're breathing. And I could do this for just ridiculously long. On, on the physical body or in an imaginary third eye, imaginary light out here or on the physical you can do it any way that you want. Okay. Just put your attention up there. <laughs> For me, drifts down. Yeah, yeah. Oh. For me, when I close my eyes, there's this pattern that I will do. So and, and everything for me is patterns. That's why I say everything's kaleidoscopic. Um, 
but you'll see that like when you close your eyes and you pretend like you're looking down at the end of say a residential block, you know, like you're looking at something at a distance, you'll feel the muscles behind your eyes move into a certain structural pattern that allow you to see at that greater distance. Then pretend like you're reading something that's right up in front of your eyes. And you can see that muscular structure, that pattern uh, rearranges itself again so that you can see that thing up close. In one of your videos, you also talk about stare at a candle flame for as long as you can, maybe two minutes, and then close your eyes and try and get some kaleidoscopic effects. So this is how Tritak will start. Tritak is just conscious gazing. And when you move from the dot or the picture of a loved one or whatever it is you're going to start working with uh, to make it, you know, yourself able to do it, uh, you'll move to a candle flame. You know, and you just gaze with open eyes without blinking at that candle flame for two minutes or until the eyes begin to water. And then you close the eyes. When you're working with that candle flame, you'll notice when you close your eyes, if you are able to maintain that two minutes and you'll build that toward 10, that when you close your eyes, you're able to see the after image of that flame much easier, you know, because it's light in front of your closed eyes. And then to talk as an internal to talk where you're holding your attention on that after image of the flame in front of your closed eyes. And yes, this begins to shift your awareness just gradually more inward and outward. And if you can maintain that awareness, you'll be in an outer body experience. You actually are in an outer body. <laughs> People want to know how easy it is to go on a body and how easy is it to close your eyes? When I close my eyes, I see, uh, I see a white, a white image of you, of your, your hair. Mm -hmm. I've been staring at you for half an hour now. So. Right. Right. Yeah. So it, and it works in this way. And, you know, the, tr the practice of church talk just opened out for me in, in the way that it did with being able to not just consciously shift out of body, but to consciously shift from that out of body state, state back into physical space with all that data intact. That's the part that's hard for people. So we, was that the fourth, was that the third practice? Cause you said four practices originally, Brahmacharya, Shavasana, and was it, uh, self-inquiry it's the question self-inquiry self yeah no. that's the, the buddhist practice of just sitting in the silence and or asking yourself questions what could you talk about about that practice um it's an awareness of awareness practice as opposed to meditation which is more standardly awareness on an object a single point a single thought um no, uh, so it's just a, an awareness on awareness practice. And so no thought. As soon as you're aware of en anything entering the field, uh, you ask the question, uh, to whom does this thought occur? <laughs> okay. And then you don't answer. Um, you don't answer because you don't know. So now you have silence again for a period of time. Okay. But if the thought was persistent and it says, you know, it's occurring to you. <laughs> You ask the question, who am I? And again, you don't know. So again, there's a period of silence and this process just repeats. That's so, so simple. Then, yeah. Mm -hmm. To whom does this occur? To whom does this thought occur? Who am I when it finally stays? And you did you get an answer eventually? What you get is silence. And in the silence, you get all that is. <laughs> And, and with that, I had the top down awakening and in the top down awakening, I enjoyed watching the process of shifting, uh, frequencies. It was the process of shifting frequencies that had so much of my attention because that's where all of the data is. It's not in the data fields. There's so little information in the data fields in physical spaces, you know, um, but it, it was that conscious shift and I would be inside my own biological structure, my own biological systems, um, uh, just letting anything capture my attention. But mostly what captured my attention, I was a pranayama teacher at that time, was the process of just witnessing myself slowly stop breathing. 
And uh, there has always been a doorway that I have been aware of at the bottom of the breath that has fascinated me always, you know. And so I, you know, would lengthen my exhales and really practice my breath suspensions and hang out, just hover there for very long periods of time at the bottom of the breath, aware of that doorway, you know. But now, now that doorway opened and I could pass through it, quote, out of body. <laughs> oh, so you have done a lot of pranayama. Uh, well, in my case, that's just how we did it. So my process just involved me witnessing myself slowly stop breathing until I was no longer in physical space. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so well, when you're, when you're projecting, I was, I've just got, I've just, as I say, Preston's book just arrived. So I yeah. haven't, uh, I haven't read it yet, but I just figured through the chapters and it's, um, put people and animals on the astral plane, food and sex on the animal, animal plane, astral plane. Um, there's some amazing stuff in here. So have, have you traveled all through the astral, obviously? All through the astral. Um, well, I'll emphasize here once again, that it's the shift itself that has always hold the out the bulk of my attention. Um, the landing locations, not as interesting to me, <laughs> um, but the landing locations that um, I most pattern my awareness to focus in on were those in galactic space. So um, other planets, uh, myself and other bodies, uh, onboard craft, of course, on the table. Um, <laughs> a lot of ET species are, are working with me because I suppose I have the capacity to allow that. Uh, without uh, so much fear that it would be detrimental to my physical body and physical lifetime. Um, so, yeah, that holds, I'm going to say, most of my attention. So you haven't been seen, like, you haven't visited your dead relatives like uh, Preston did? Okay, so... Where physical space meets astral space... And the physical is just your beta brainwave. So when your brainwaves are in a pattern that's predominantly that beta frequency, we're in what we call physical space. That frequency literally is physical space. <laughs> the earth life, everything that we're doing here, right? So, um, and then the astral, that's that alpha wave. So when you're, uh, and it's also galactic space, <laughs> mm. people think of the astral, like something in a dream time. That's not real. It's like, no, that's galactic space. That's when you graduate from your own planetary body. And now you have a much larger experience territory, much larger. Cause all, cause all the other planets are habited just a different frequency of vibration. Exactly. So when you graduate from planetary life, you are now a galactic citizen, which is what I have done. And which I suppose is why I gave it a lot of my attention because I am here to help people make that conscious shift um, as far, you know, into that conscious shift as is possible. So many people in the earth life will experience the shift, but they won't even realize that a shift has taken place. Just all of a sudden, one day, um, uh, do, we will have EPs here on the planet and stuff, and it will be a great, they won't realize that they won't have moved through the process in full conscious awareness. However, they will have moved through the process. <laughs> and do you go to the planets in our, in our solar system? Say that one more time. Do you go to our planets in our solar system? Um, I can't say that our solar system has held most of my attention. Uh, where I go to is where I actually am NET bodies and other solar systems. <laughs> Um, but I can't even say where those are. I'm not even sure that we have words for them. Uh, uh, the only lifetime I have connected with that's associated with a concept we actually, uh, use here right now is the Anunnaki. Uh, so I, I, I am. Uh, and on a Naki and on a Naki lifetime, and I am highly benevolent, by the way. So those who say that all on a Naki aren't, um, no, nah, I just like saying all humans. So you know, you can, you just can't make the statement. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so yeah, and I've captured him through the crystal. So a lot of who I bring back through the crystal is the, who I am in these other worlds and these other bodies. You know, you can, I can show them to you. Because from the teachings, because my only reference is because I only got into this two years ago into metaphysics, and my only reference is is um, the teachings of the Ethereum Society and also the the yogic teachings. So you know the what i'm what i know about is is from what dr king has said in that the other planets mars and venus are, are helping us a lot and that nobody really seems to talk so much about them they seem all the the ufos and they seem to talk about people from other galactic systems mm -hmm. and other other solar systems but they don't really talk about the masters on who are very close to us you know watching over us and stopping us you know being hit by medias or invaded or you know we're, mm. you know because there was there was to so dr king he so he raised kundalini top to uh, bottom to top and so he became a, um, a master and he was actually the the mahabodhisattva for this age so jesus was for the piscean age and dr king came for the for the aquarian age and he um he's basically a jedi so he he projected into he just did the astral projection out of the body and then went to the lower realms mm -hmm. you know, on this earth, the, the darkest, deepest, you know, and sorted it out, transmuted a lot of very bad people. And so he, you know, that was his kind of secret mission and all the teachings that he gave us because he, because he, he could do a somatic trance. So he. Instead of a, a passive trance, people coming through and doing it, being a medium in that way, they, he could see these beams. We went into somebody, raised Kundalini in about two minutes up to Shunga, and then focused on these beams and held them on his throat. And then he could talk, channel these masters. And he gave us books like uh, the 12 blessings from the master Jesus, the new, the new um, sermon on the mount with a cosmic message. So mm -hmm. it's all, it's all about the, the interplanetary ones like, like yourself. You know, the people, the, the people who've raised, who've ascended and can go and live on other planets and to, to, in other classrooms. And then also that the, the mother earth is a, is a living being who is millions of lives more evolved than us. She, but she's the amalgamation of consciousness of individual masters, many, many millions of years evolved merged together. So the, the mother earth is this, this incredible master this incredible goddess who we who we are living here after we destroyed maldek um does that ring with it true with any of you any of that um well as far as my experience goes i just don't have the type of experience that you're mentioning right now but this would just go right back to what we were speaking about with the patterns of awareness and um uh, with these patterns of awareness we can sometimes see ourselves as as having missions and something that we're here to do or something mm -hmm. um we may be just highly skilled at um my being doesn't get involved in karmic relations <laughs> It's not interested in that. It's often in these wider spaces, uh, worried for me making it back, <laughs> um, because of what we can tend to do with our human awareness. Um, so I, I work very hard to simply be aware and to observe what I'm being aware of without bringing my, um, personal thought patterns into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so what I could say is that yes, I go out of body, but more accurate is that I'm taken out of body. <laughs> I could say I go to these other places and do these things, but more accurate would be that I'm taken into certain frequencies. I'm, I'm brought, uh, before certain people, um, I'm so, yeah, I've gone down into the lower realms, but it wasn't me who went there to do anything in particular. I was brought there 
And if I'm brought anywhere, I'm brought there to help. That was the very first thing I learned. <laughs> that, um, uh, and it was how I didn't go into too much fear, the way I allowed it to happen for four years, nightly, daily, <laughs> without creating uh, fear that, you know, made it stop. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't do these things. I'm mean, brought into these areas, uh, again, to help. So, the, yeah, that first thing that I learned was that we're all in service. <laughs> yeah, that's the motto yeah. of the theory society. Service is the jewel in the rock of a time. Period. First, we are, right? I am. Mm. And next, in service. <laughs> Everything's in service. The, the sun, the earth, the heart. The... That's it. There's no personal. Don't bring personal thought constructs into this, especially as a 3D or 3D. Um, mm. or, or, or do, but there's karmic implications in, in that, in which uh, once you, you complete the life experience, you'll say, ah, oh, man, look at the opportunity I've had. And you'll want to come back and like, fix that or you know, have to go at it. Yeah. Whereas that's what everyone says. Yeah. Yeah. My being doesn't want to, yeah, it, it, it's, it's very adamant. It, I think it will just end my life on a dime if I start to do anything like that or, you know, or, um, it's not like nothing ever escapes my mouth, but I pay for it almost immediately. Like it's worked out almost immediately. And what happens to that very day? <laughs> it's the karma. <laughs> and if that wasn't able to happen, yeah, I think that they would end my life on a dime. Yeah, they, yeah, because they're not interested in the curve. Cur so how are, how are you of service then if you're brought down into the lower astrals, for example? Do you? So like like with you, there's there's there there's how you are. There's just how you are, and the things that you normally think, and and the way that the the things that you would normally think or or, or feel. And so I'm brought in because of that. You know, uh, there's, there's not a lot of judgment in me. Mm -hmm. So I'm used in a lot of different ways for a lot of different things. Um, and because there is that, that core, there's a core, uh, purity, there's a core, um, I want to say desire, but it's not quite right to help. Mm -hmm. Um, that when I brought somewhere, that's just naturally what I, what I exude and what I would just normally think in the situation that I'm being presented with, what I would normally say, you know, to help a person in a situation like the one I'm viewing, uh, is, is what helps that, I mean, so there's no effort. Just, just your thought patterns, there. just your, your thought. It's just who I am. Okay. You know, like what could help this situation over here? Oh, this one over here. <laughs> and so I never direct where I'm going when I'm going out. But I want to ask about these negative experiences, because when you're on this table, which is the one experience you don't like, are you not able to, to have control and say, no, I don't want to leave. I don't want to go there. I want to go here because when other people project astrally, they, they, you know, I've heard again, I'm just speaking from, from experience that they, they have to master concentration because if you think of somewhere, you go there in a flash and then it's a blur and then you're there. And then suddenly another book, like me, every five seconds, I get an idea into my head. I'm, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be on the astral like a ping pong ball. So, but do you, so, so it's difficult for me because I've no, no context for your experiences. Are you not able to, to say no, and I want to go here and please do this? Well, what's the other thing that you have to master? Besides what you just mentioned. Concentration. You have to, you have to master fear, right? Uh. So what kind of karmic implications are there if you panic out of a certain situation? Well, you normally, so I think people, they project to higher realms. Normally you go where your attention, if you, you know, project to a lower realm. That's what most people bring back, but that's not all that happened. Okay. Um, we're never just in one point. Oh, going back like, to that. Yeah. Yeah. At a time. So that's just what they're able to bring back with them. <laughs> mm. Um, uh, and it's what they want to bring back with them. You know, it's what they want to work with. They want to work with those tools to help the space and, you know, so that there's a reason for them doing that. It's not that anything's ever right or wrong. 
that nothing is ever right or wrong. <laughs> it just is what it is. And it is what it is because there is one being the all that there is, you know? And so you never have to look any further than that. But I don't um, say no ever. Here's another thing that I learned about not creating karmic implications from a very young age. Never say no. <laughs> that can get you into trouble. I am. That's who you are. I am. Is there a no in that ever? There's not. So if that you can lead to abuse and no, no, this is, this is where you, you have to learn. Okay. And so you learn to not put yourself in positions that, you know, will make it awkward for you. <laughs> or create those kind of experiences. It's an inner awareness that lets you do that. You know, um, here's an example. We're we're going to work, but uh, we're getting a bit behind schedule and we're starting to rush. When we rush, we begin to make some mistakes, but not realizing that spirit is putting things in your way to keep you five minutes behind so that you're not in a car accident down the line isn't on your awareness. <laughs> getting to work is, right? And so it's a matter of, of trust. And, you know, and ag again, an inner awareness, because that inner awareness is what's going to let you feel spirit. Um, your inner being and how your inner being is moving you and why that inner being is moving you in this way. And so anywhere the inner being is moving you, it's moving you into uh, something that you can learn from, uh, grow from. And to ever say no to that is not appropriate. And so I'm coming at this from the inside out rather than the outside in where you create all kinds of reasons to not do things like slow down and listen to your inner being. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So coming, just tur turn the whole thing inside out. You know, the, this awakening is a process of turning yourself inside out. Um, not being a uh, physical body inside, which is a much smaller point called uh, an awareness and whatever, but the other way around where you're a point of awareness inside, which is this physical body structure. And if you can live your life that way, um, you'll be in the multiple fields all at once, and you'll feel the rhyme and reason, you know, when things are getting in your way and you won't work against that. <laughs> yes. And again, you create by working against it situations like the ones that you're just bringing up. Um, so did no, my inner being, it moved me here. And so to say no to it again, wasn't appropriate, but two, I also know that when you go into, uh, fear, you're going to create some karmic implications if you're not willing to work with that fear. So I have karmic implications with these beings that I refuse to let myself open my eyes and see. <laughs> and we all do. It's not like we ever work through them all. If we worked through them all, there'd be no reason to still be here. Um, you know, except for perhaps as a, a saint, somebody who can come and go, you know, who can just manifest and demon, you know, dematerialize when they want. Um, but so no, when I get onto that table, hmm, no, let me not lie. Let me not say I never work against this because I do. Because I can feel it happening before it's, I'm even going to be tracked or beamed up there. Like I can I'm be here in the room and I start to feel the energy. I'm like, ah, I mean, it's them again, you know, <laughs> and I, I know it's going to happen. You know, they put my body, you know, they'll lay my body uh, on its back with my arms and legs, you know, held wide and I'll just be magnetically sealed to the bed. I have to go through that whole process. And yeah, um, I'm trying to work with them to do this. Um, they are so unlike earth human. They are, they must not have an emotional body. I don't want to speculate that they're, you know, um, one of the species of, of the greys, but you know, of course it has to pop into your awareness when that kind of an idea comes, but they just don't know how to work in a compassionate manner. <laughs> like they're not aware, um, uh, always of, of how I'm feeling. And I'm not going to say that that hasn't made strides from 2009 to now, now, you know, it has, and they're learning with me and through me how to work with earth humans. And do I want to help them work that out before 
much of the rest of the population. Sure, I, I'm, I'm signed up for that because I'm always somebody that wants to help. You know, if I can help 95% of the population not go through this, if I can help them work out what they need to in order for others to have a more um, workable experience of their first contact, am I willing to do that? Yes. Would I ever say no? No. Um, I do work against it sometimes. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm, you know, <laughs> but not so much that I put the whole thing to an end. No, I'm aware that I signed on for this and that I'm willing <laughs> yes. and, and there's always something, nothing is ever one way. There's always something in here for you. So if you uh, are, are uh, uh, let's say a muscle man, you, you like to build muscles and work out with weights, but you know, you have a weak spot. Are you just going to keep saying no to ever working that out because it hurts because, you know, you can never make any progress with it. You know, do you ever just give up? <laughs> no. You know, so it's like that. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm trying to metabolize all this. This is above my pay grade, all of this. I mean, this is because. You know, if, if I did speak to, it's what you're talking about. People have different, like those, those people that are talking to you, they have a different, you no know, emotional body or that they're, they're working in a different time sequence. They're working with a completely different mental process. And, and, you know, people like yourself as well, talking to me, we have a different, you know, you're having all these different spec, uh, different experience in these different realms at these times. It's, it's hard for me and my binary mind to understand everything you're saying and i i really what i think i need to do is the practices to get to where you are because like then only then can i can i understand it and i need to do these you know develop more to to fully metabolize you, what you're saying <laughs> you could do that but then there'd be a wait there'd be a gap and i would highly suggest to not do that i would suggest to be right there where you are as you are mm. bringing all of this information in and observing, what are my thoughts about this? Yeah. How, th how is this making me feel? <laughs> okay, doing this right now, yeah. And then, and then working on that. Is there improvement okay. to those thought structures? Are there improvements to those, you know, feeling patterns, you know, that I'm creating? Uh, did any tight spots, did I just start, you know, tensing anywhere in my body? Okay. What happens when I relax there and then listen, you know? Um, so that's difference. That's difference to the self inquiry, or is that another aspect of the to whom does this thought occur? This is a well. There's also a practice uh, in Yana uh, that's called Shravana, and this is attentive listening. <laughs> okay, oh, I need to. <laughs> that's my job. <laughs> yeah, because satsang is very big in Yana, right? And so the student has to be able to truly listen without you know jumping its own thought structures in the way of what's being said, so that mm. right right understanding can come about. And so, um, one of the things that we often do when we're listening to someone else speak, um, especially if they're saying something that maybe we're not familiar with or that mm. we have different ideas about, we'll create uh, patterns of uh, uh, stress through the body. Like I have a tendency to hold a knot in my right thigh <laughs> if I don't like what's being said. Um, and so like, you know, I'm always uh, uh, more aware of that now that I know that that's a tendency of my own. And so I will relax there and watch the rest of my body just give way to that. Yeah, I hold it in my uh, abdomen, my diaphragm in the front of my body. Uh-huh. Okay. And so then just relax there. Oh, you hear, hear that? You hear that burp? Yeah, that's good. That was oh, really So that's yeah, just, something. I didn't realize I was holding that in. <laughs> there we go. Well done. Yeah, well, I had a little step forward there. Yeah, relaxing and releasing, relaxing. And re that's all the K is. That's all the K is going to do. And so we can we can do it also on our end from a very highly conscious state of awareness, uh, voluntarily, willingly, you know, so that our listening uh, improves. So that uh, as the listening improves and the frequencies and codes are coming into us, we can see how those are interacting with our own. Mm -hmm. When I say that there's always something to be gained when we come into a relationship or communication with another is that there is an exchange of data. And uh, this exchange of data is happening, you know, at a cellular level, at the level of DNA, of code. And if we allow that, we'll find ourselves being restructured. And I have 
a certain pattern of cleared neural networking through myself that is highly advantageous for anybody on the planet right now to connect with. <laughs> oh, so I'm lucky. <laughs> well, everybody does is the mm. point. Mm. And this is why it's not going to hurt us to listen to anybody. As I'm talking to you, if I were here asking you questions, um, bringing in the information would interact again at that level of code with myself and mm. fill in anything that might be missing. Uh -huh. You know, and this is how, when I connected with Christine, I also connected with her clear neural networks that allowed her to vision the ETs the way that she did so that she could portrait them out. Because we are all aspects of the one, the divine, no, we are all mm -hmm. conscious or we want, we have to go back to God as conscious gods. We're all, we're all, there is only the one we all have to, we're all cells in the one. So eventually, so. So we're doing this all to learn and experience. So it makes sense that you're learning something different. I'm learning something different because when we finally merge, maybe yes. later, then we're going to be so much, so much better. We complete each other, each and every one of us, including the ETs and anything that happens there, complete each other. So mm. um, without each other, we just can't do it. We can't get it done. So if we're ever, if we're still holding ourselves apart from it, um, I could go off on another tangent here because I do hold myself apart from separation. <laughs> <laughs> That's a paradoxical. <laughs> and because of that, I spend most of my time alone because most, most people are engaged in, in that mm. and I, I don't play. Um, I can't in order to do what I came here to do. Um, but yes, all of this begins to work itself out and really important to say right here is that right now at this current time uh spectrum on our planet so so much more is possible than what is usually possible that to let any of it get by us is mm. you know just it's the big, un, big chance now yeah it's the best time right? in so our if, lives to be alive yeah if you want to run a four minute mile you Find out who has run a four minute mile, sit down, close your eyes, connect with that being with its cleared neural networking, feel that happening within yourself. I am positive you have the level of awareness that would let you actually feel this process occurring and then go out and, and run your four minute mile because it, it just happened. Um, now, and don't put any thought structures in there that say that you can't do it. I mean, those were just cleared, so don't put them back. <laughs> Um, my point being that if there's anything you want to do right now, there is a, somebody on the planet who can do it and who you can connect with, with their cleared neural networking in order to do it yourself. Think of how fun this would be. I mean, it's been fun with me, with the crystal. Yeah. Who the thunk? Who, cause are there photos on your website of the crystal you've taken? I've seen some of your videos and, um, there were some amazing photo i thought they were illustrations but they are you're saying they're photos of you yeah because we're on zoom i can actually show you i will when i yeah this is so fun i mean these look like pic, just pictures that you would take with your camera i mean although you can clearly see they're coming through a crystal the beings are i we're as clear as clear can be now <laughs> i can bring them i can bring them right into you know a beta brainwave pattern then you'll have to, can you widen the screen or enlarge it? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. They look like dogs. <laughs> they all look different. Sometimes the same guy will come through, you know, in different ways for me. Every frame says something a little different, even if it's the same being who comes through. Look at Shaw there. Look at how clear Shaw's eyes are. Wow. It's like a cat. <laughs> um, that being is, um, oh, what's their name? Am I going to remember? They're said to be perhaps some of the first beings who will make contact Right, yeah, no, no duplicate. They're all very different. Yeah, very different. Unique. 
that cephalopod right there, um, I went out of body and yeah, it was a contact with that cephalopod. <clears throat> I'll scroll down a little bit. Uh, no, up, up, sorry. I'm... Wow, scary. Yeah. If you say, go up a little bit more and right there where the two big guys are, uh, next to Alon on the right, is he on your right? Um, yep. that, that's who I am. That's the Anunnaki being I am. Wow. Alan is a, a feline. Oh, my family sometimes comes through. So scroll up a little bit more where, until you see dad. <laughs> That's my dad, my, my earth dad uh, in an ET body. And just below him on the right is my sister, Sandy. <laughs> and then I've come through, if you scroll down on the left there, it says Mesopotamian child. Can you actually see that, the being there? Uh, a little bit, two eyes there and a young mouth for a young. Yeah, sort of gazing up toward the yeah. light. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's me as a Mesopotamian child oh. here on Earth. Frog. Aleander is a dragon. Yeah, there's just so, so many. This, yeah, this yeah. Is just a, this is just a handful. Uh, of the uh, Tia was the very first one to come through, <laughs> feeling being on a craft in local space. She's still out there in local space. Yeah, I've heard there are many feline species and also um, insect species and all different types of as many as you can imagine. Though. Mm -hmm. and... Yeah, I have I have experience with a great many of them. And is it karmic reasons that they're not allowed to land openly yet? <clears throat> they are here. We are not on their frequency. So the earth is shifting frequencies, making an actual dimensional, a full dimensional shift from 3 into 4D. And only those who are interested, you know, in contact with the ETs uh, will, you know, come into the awareness of them. You know, in 4D, there's still plenty of people, you know, on the earth who aren't, you know, interested in working with that yet. So. But are you uh, also aware of the ascended masters of the earth and those who've ascended, but are still here, like on Shambhala and. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, like, I'm aware of the concept. Sure. I just call them graduates, earth graduates. Yeah. Uh-huh. And do you know about also the primary initiation of Earth, where the Earth receives in 8th of July, 1964, because she, she has to raise her consciousness. She received all this energy in the primary initiation of Earth, and that's what's enabling the, the shift. Mm, that concept I'm not familiar with. Okay. Just to know. But, but those are some of the beings. Yeah. And so I can just give people an idea. And the rest of your website, they people can, you can also work with, uh, you do there's consultations. A there's a video here that just explains a little bit about what I'm doing, um, through the crystal. It's a little 10 minute video. Okay. Um, so this, this entire platform, uh, is an unconditional platform. Mm-hmm. So we don't charge, there's, there's no monies exchanged. Uh, if you like to support the platform, you know, if you like to just support the idea of unconditional anything so that we can ground more of these unconditional structures here, there is a Patreon, uh, but, uh, like we don't hide anything there. It's uh. visible to anybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so that there's an avenue for that. But uh, yeah, I teach people, uh, I mentor the out-of-body experience, the conscious shift, um, all of that. We have Zooms, we do meditations together, we have a healing circle. So yeah, it's a, there's a, if you go, I'll let you scroll there for a minute. Yeah. But yeah, just this is my OBE log. So if you 
my OBs are really changing. They're really starting to get into Earth history um, and the 3D control system <laughs> and all of that, which is really fun. So, like, I've been taken to the Queen's Palace and shown things that uh, have happened there. I, uh, you know, I'm getting up on the Pleiadian crafts quite frequently right now. Uh, I was attacked. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> As I experienced a frequency assault here uh, not long ago, just months ago. And yeah, I try to explain that to, to people. Was that coming through your fridge? Is that what you talked about? The <laughs> yes. You were uh -huh. attacked by your fridge. That, well, no, not by my fridge. But, this, but it can come through the frequencies. So like all electronic devices have um, um, mechanisms. up the radio even. Something. Inside, right, that uh, uh, vibrate them at particular frequencies that other outside frequencies can connect with. Yeah. And so like in that video, right, that man's example was that he could get radio one, radio one washing yeah. machine when he turned it on. Yeah. I think I remember experiencing some things like that in the sixties too. Um, seventies, okay. early seventies. But and what uh, happened when you were attacked, it was the, the frequency of the it was really interesting. I started, uh, again, never go into fear and never attack. Uh, you know, uh, one of the first things that we are dismantling um, in the biological system when we're doing a conscious shift is we're neutralizing fight flight. And so we really have to get out of that habit of immediately running away or fighting what it is we don't like. Mm. And so... Yeah, and just staying there neutral in the energy of what's happening, being aware of it, observing what you're being aware of, and letting that give you information that allows you to help others see you. everything is always to our advantage, always. But we just have to remember to state that to ourselves so that, you know, we program in. Again, when I start going out of body, I'm like, I don't care who this is or what you are or anything. Anything that happens is going to be to my advantage. <laughs> so if you're trying to bring me down, ain't going to happen. You know, any, any negs, because there are negatives <laughs> out there trying to do something, you're going down. You're going to fail here. Turn around and go back now. Save yourself. <laughs> because I, I never go down, ever. <laughs> um, so, but in this so the, the, the nine freedoms, the first bravery, this, is, this was transmitted by a, uh, a lord of karma, Mars Sector 6, and the first freedom is bravery. Yeah. So this figure goes bravery, love, then service, and then enlightenment, cosmic consciousness, and ascension, and then interplanetary existence. There's your base to crown. And if yeah. you're crowned to base, it would, uh, those would probably uh, likely come in reverse. Wow. Um, but when it comes in reverse, it's like concentric circles. You get it all, all at once. You're, you're, it's not a, um, a linear. It's not a linear experience. It's all, all at once. So if you can hold it, do it. <laughs> oh. Well, I've, I need to metabolize. I think even just our conversation, even not the words you used, but I think that we've had, you know, this exchange of, of, I've been changed by this experience of speaking to you, on, even on a nonverbal level. So I'm really, yeah, I have not understood everything you've said and it's quite complicated for me to metabolize, but I need to digest. I need to come back to you another later date and have another conversation. Oh, definitely. Because know that it's the same here on my end. I cannot tell you the delight I experience inside myself as I meet each and every one of us um, who are here, you know, to aid with what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's like, again, it's like food. It's just, it's fulfilling in a way that you know, it's really hard to say. It's just yeah. fulfilling. Because you don't speak to many people, you say, but you do have I'm one of the lucky ones to, to get through to you. I mean, yeah. you're selective. Speaking to people now, 2009, when I came out, yeah, no, because you can't hold all of it in. Mm. You can't. So immediately, you know, it's so funny too, because YouTube had just opened up the year previously. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's that thing, you know, so funny. I sat down. I didn't even know where the camera was. I'm always looking at somewhere oh. over here, talking to people. <laughs> talking like in ultra slow motion because I had never planned. I, you know, there was no plan. They're just like, you know, sit down, open the computer and start talking. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, we're in the city. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so well. I would just start talking. And now I talk so fast. You can't slow me down. 
<laughs> so people can see your, you've got many videos on your YouTube channel. There's also your website, consciousnessexploration.com. And the board has a, uh, the website has a forum board attached to it, which is where we are. We're not on social media anymore. Okay. Most of us have made the jump off. Uh, mm, for the uh, better. Aside from YouTube, but I mean, the you know, like Facebook and stuff like that. So we're on our own forum board. We're creating our own ship, as it were. <laughs> and we are hoping to grow that. But yeah, the website, um, the forum board, uh, we do the Zooms. Everybody's everybody's welcome to come do Zooms. Okay. If you like to meditate, just come sit and meditate with me. Hardly anybody does, but, you know, I'm, oh, well. there, I'm there twice a week. <laughs> and that's <laughs> in the, uh, that's a link on your website. It's on the forum board. You could write at the top of the forum board. So the... Um, um, the website on. you'll see community forum yeah, yeah. It just close you there yeah okay well i'll put a link in the in the show to show notes and hopefully some more people will come and join you i know i will i will yeah that would be great and great it's fun to meditate together yeah yeah wonderful thank you so much it's been really wonderful to chat to you <laughs> thank you yeah really fun definitely definitely let's do it again all right take care all casey right. And you, and I was going to say, if you have anything specific you want to talk about that you want to dive into more specifically so that it's not just all over the place, like we were here today, um, I'm good with that. <laughs> I think so, because you have a, you have a playlist of videos on your, on your, on YouTube about how to get started in, the uh, in astral projection. And I'm watching, I'm, I'm working my way through that and also reading this. So once I have a few more, once I've run into some blocks, as I'm sure I will, then I'll come and speak to you. Definitely. I look forward to it. Thank you. All right, Casey. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>